A 7.0 magnitude earthquake hit Anchorage, Alaska on Friday. The tremor caused buildings to shake and roads to collapse. Several aftershocks shook the area Saturday morning, and despite the damage, there are no reported deaths. Carter Evans is in Anchorage. The earthquake rattled buildings in Anchorage with tremors so strong they could be felt up to 350 miles away. It was shaking like forever. That scared the crud out of everybody and everybody's freaking out a little bit. Students dove under desks to take cover as the quake rocked classrooms. And concerns about structural damage led the Anchorage School District to cancel classes through next Tuesday. Thousands lost power. Downed lines were the expected cause of this church fire. And at our CBS station in Anchorage. This is the newsroom. The shaking brought down parts of the ceiling, knocked over equipment and shattered glass. The quake ripped through major roads across the region, including parts of Alaska's scenic Glen Highway. Traffic piled up for miles. You know, everybody just, just ran out. We Alongside Governor Bill Walker, we were some of the first to return to his office in Anchorage since it was evacuated Friday morning. Oh, wow, look at all that. He was in one of the building's elevators at the time of the quake. Well, at first I thought it was the elevator, but then it really got going. And I thought, wow, this feels, this feels like the big one. This feels like, this is like something that could really do some damage. Later, he surveyed the damage from above with the Alaska National Guard. Walker told us it brought back memories of the state's devastating 9.2 magnitude earthquake in 1964. The sheer strength of an earthquake that you can, that you can crumble a, a perfectly good highway. You can, you can buckle a bridge. You can, I mean, it was amazing, the, the power behind uh, what we saw. John Vidali is a seismologist and the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center. He joins me now from L.A. So, John, earthquakes are not uncommon in Alaska, but this one was really strong. Was it the magnitude or the location of the quake that was unusual? Well, it's clearly the location. I mean, the big earthquakes happen all the time in Alaska. Even in January, there was almost a magnitude eight a few hundred miles to the south. Uh, yeah, the special aspect of this was it was so close to Anchorage. And it was fairly deep, about 30, 30 miles down. Uh, so it could have been worse, but uh, yeah, it was very close to Anchorage, and that's why people found it terrifying. We're still hearing about aftershocks in that area. How much longer do you think they'll last? Well, the aftershocks trail away gradually. They kind of fall off by a factor of two every time you lengthen the time by two. So there'll be aftershocks for this uh, earthquake for years, but the chances of a dangerous earthquake diminish rapidly. There could be even a bigger earthquake than the first one. But we expect maybe a magnitude six aftershock. That'd be about normal in the sequence, but they'll continue for quite a while. Alaska is part of what's known as the Ring of Fire. Can you explain what that is and any concern that this earthquake could potentially trigger other quakes like in places as far as California? Well, the Ring of Fire is the uh, area where there's plate tectonic boundaries around the Pacific uh, Ocean, um, all the way you know, from the U.S. up north to Alaska, down to Japan and to the Philippines. And where these plate boundaries occur is where we have these giant earthquakes, often much bigger than the one uh, yesterday. But there's also volcanoes and where there's this tectonic activity, there's landslides and there are tidal waves. Uh, so the Ring of Fire is a place where there's a lot of natural disasters. Um, this current earthquake makes it more dangerous today in Alaska. It's shaken that area around Anchorage and there could well be more earthquakes. But it doesn't uh, extend as far as California. It doesn't probably extend out of uh, Alaska, the region that has a higher danger. So it's not a threat to the rest of us. John, we know there's been a lot of talk about natural disasters and climate change. Any link with climate change and the earthquakes? Conceivably, there could be a weak link. You know, if the water goes up a little bit or if the snow load changes a little bit, um, it, there could be tiny effects, but we don't think it is even noticeable. Um, so we don't expect that climate change will change the danger of earthquakes much. John Vidali, thank you for joining us. Well, you're welcome. Anytime.